Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our Friday lunchtime reflection on this very unusual bank holiday. Um, don't forget that at six o'clock there will be uh, an evening service that's, that's going to focus around uh, VA Day. Um, but for the moment we're going to um, spend a little time in prayer and focus on Luke's Gospel again. So we begin with the, the familiar prayers that we've been using. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered in God's presence, separated by distance, but united by God's love. So come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And just as we remember that we are something less than we should be, we just remember uh, our sins and just leave them with God. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. And those words are forgiveness. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 14. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went up to the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. He rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. He said, Isn't this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you'll quote me this proverb. Doctor, cure yourself. And he'll say, Do ye also in your hometown the things that ye heard I did at Capernaum. And he said, Should I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow, as Arabeth and Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage, and they got up and they drove him out of town and led him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, so that he might hurl them off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Jesus comes home to Nazareth, and in the synagogue he reads out that passage from Isaiah. And he says to the people gathered there, the ones who knew him as a child, the ones he grew up alongside, he says to them, Today the scripture's been fulfilled in your hearing. He just wants them to understand. He wants them to be among the first to know that God's grace is being poured out for everyone, being poured out at this very moment. And that the Messiah, the Christ, isn't to be the bringer of God's punishment and retribution, but 
the one who shares God's love with everyone who shares God's mercy. How would you react if you were hearing those words being spoken by someone you knew? And to begin with, I mean, the folks seemed amazed that a lad from Nazareth can speak such inspiring and gracious words. And then they start a chat. Is this Joseph's son? And for him to be the Messiah, the Christ, the one they've been waiting for. Jesus senses the mood change and starts to speak about a prophet not being accepted in his hometown and how they shouldn't be expecting him to do a miracle just to satisfy their curiosity. Oh, and they start to get really upset and angry and they drive him out of town. Some even want to throw him off the cliff. Jesus walks out on them. Jesus leaves Nazareth under a cloud. And from now on, there's going to be difficulties in his relationship with his own family. Perhaps it's understandable. In a close-knit community, what, what has happened will affect their relationship with others. And as Jesus walks away, we're left to wonder what's going through his mind. Kind of man is this? He loves, he gets angry, he experiences grief and amazement, he's full of compassion, he's got loyal followers, but often he just prefers to be on his own. Sometimes, well, he speaks plainly, sometimes his words just leave people puzzled. He curses a fig tree, clears out the temple gets upset, is on his way down with sadness. And occasionally, while well, he's stern and strict and demanding, sometimes he refuses requests. And he can be ironic, but affectionate, patient, exasperated, completely fearless. Jesus is at home in his body. He enjoys companionship, doesn't mind being surrounded by crowds. He likes a good meal, a glass of wine. He can draw a crowd and hold them in the palm of his hand. And yet ordinary people are wary of a Lord to be in his presence. He laughs with people. He's laughed at by people. Some say he's out of his mind. Eventually he'll be arrested, mocked, tortured, put to death. A very, very vulnerable God. Maybe we all much prefer the immortal, invisible, godly, wise kind of God, a God who is far off, somewhere up in heaven. But a God who's one of us is a bit more of a challenge. Because if God's like one of us, if God is like our neighbour or our friend, our stranger, our enemy, then the whole lot of them well, they're all made in the image of God. And that means how we relate to them matters as well. So what do you make of a God who is one of us? Jesus, the presence of God among us, was fully human, just like us. Someone who walked the paths and roads of first century Palestine, just as you and I walked around Gateshead. We know his family. We know the names of his family, friends and family. I wonder, if we want to know what God's like, do we need to start by looking in the mirror, looking at our friends, people we know? If we want to know what God's like, do we begin with someone we know? But then we start to ask questions. About what that might mean. When Jesus meets someone, he treats them as if God is somehow present in them. And he looks for that presence within all of their very many contradictions. Of course, Jesus isn't just human, he's also divine. And yet, his divinity never overpowers, never delight, di dilutes that humanity. So if you want to know God, 
start with a human. This is how God made himself known to us and lived among us. A very human Jesus suffered on that cross and died. We all have our own ideas about how we expect God to be. Maybe it's we'd rather that God was a bit less like us. Maybe we'd prefer the kind of God who gives us control of our lives, who gives us authority and presence. But God isn't like that. God is like Jesus. If God became one of us, that should encourage us to accept, to love, to understand, to be comfortable with who we are, even with all our limitations. I think God meant it to be this way, so that you and I can experience what it means to be truly human, knowing that we're all on a journey into love. A journey that will lead us home and there we'll discover the God who we know and who will welcome us just as we are. Let's just use the words that Jesus spoke that day in Nazareth and make that our prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And on this BA day, use the words of Desmond Tutu as a prayer. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through him who loves us. And so we bring all that we've got on our minds and our hearts at the moment. And we gather them as our prayer. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray with confidence. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily, daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our, our sins, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>